All right. Hi, everyone, and good afternoon, and welcome to my weekly Facebook Live. My name is John Nerrell. I help professionals who are ambitious about creating their next advancement opportunity. And I've got a great guest today who's going to share a little bit about his story and how he's created his next advancement opportunity. Please welcome to the show, Matt Rosenblum. Matt, welcome. Thanks so much for being, thanks so much for having me, John. It's uh, really a pleasure to be here. Yeah, same here. And uh, and so so you and I, you and I've known each other for a little while. We've kind of bonded over Meetup, and I appreciate you having me a guest on on your show, which is archived on your website. We'll get to all that in a minute. And uh, and today we are talking about creating outside of the box content. So Matt is an excellent content marketing strategist, and he's doing some really interesting things with his business to help serve his clients and his his followers and his community. And we're going to talk about that today as he shares some of those ideas. So as we're welcoming everybody today, if this is your first time, welcome. If you've been here a while, it's great to have you back. On my website at johnnerrell.com, I've got a free resource for you called How to Create Your Next, Three Steps to Creating Your Next Advancement Opportunity Without Feeling Overwhelmed. You can download that guide and it gets you the free workbook and it also enters you into my email community where I email everyone three times a week around a particular leadership or career topic. So Matt, that's enough of me talking. Let's get to <laughs> you. So if you could, for all of our listeners that are out there today, just tell tell people a little bit about yourself and what you do. Um, yeah, thanks, John. Um, so, you know, I, I, I actually studied philosophy in college and uh, I had no idea that I would even like be in the entrepreneurship world. Um, uh, when I graduated, uh, like I didn't know what I wanted to do, um, but essentially I knew a lot about psychology and philosophy, personal development, and I knew a lot about coaching as well because I had I was so confused in early college that I needed to hire a career coach, um, and this was an unusual move for me, being like really I was the only one like my age who did something like that, um, and uh, it opened me a lot up to a lot of like different ways of thinking and being and, 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 and living that I still use now. And I'm, I'm, I continue to work with different coaches. Um, you know, right when I graduated college, I realized right away, like, all right, now I need to make money and I need to like, uh, figure out how to align my passions with like this kind of what's my personality and how do I make money? What's my money making style? Um, and so I started a content marketing business literally right away, literally right after I graduated, I um, reached out to a self-help book publisher um, that publishes books by, of all people, Marianne Williamson um, and uh, like John Kabat-Zinn, Eckhart Tolle. Um, and, you know, I, I, my, my job was basically like to do blogging and social media and marketing for these big self-help authors. Um, and I learned so much through that work, you know, I, I, the job was, I, I was a consultant. So, um, it, it was my own business as like a blogging consultant slash social media consultant. Um, but it was more done for you consulting. I, I would do the blogging for them. I would do social media for them. Um, and I learned a ton about how the online marketing world works, um, especially like 2016 and beyond. Um, as opposed to like how it worked 10 years ago and 15 years ago. And I think these are two really, really different worlds. Mm -hmm. um, so after I worked with my self-help book publisher, I started to uh, use the knowledge I learned from there to work with individual coaches. So individual life coaches, career coaches um, to help them get clients because you know that's the biggest challenge in, in the coaching industry today is like, how the hell do I get clients? Um, how do I even do marketing? Um, and so I started applying some of the knowledge I learned from marketing these really top self-help book, book, public, book authors, um, to individual coaches. So I've been doing that for a while now, uh, and it's taking different forms and iterations. Um, uh, but that's essentially the high level. Nice. Nice. And so primarily today, who would you say are your clients? Today, right now, it's actually, um, uh, you know, my main offer is, is a lot different than it was even two months ago. Mm -hmm. um, right now, my my client is a, a career coach or a life coach or any kind of coach actually, who is a bit farther along, like experienced, um, um, who you know has has maybe been working for ten years or so, 
and uh, knows all the traditional marketing, knows like has a funnel, has like a good funnel and good sales process, um, but just wants like a, a really giant boost of publicity. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, what I'm doing now is creating massive, massive pieces of content. Um, and, and by that, I mean like TV webisodes and other things that are outside the box and like take a lot of high production, like they take a lot of time to produce um, and are, you know, really high quality, um, but get a ton of views, like 5,000 plus we're talking. Right. And so I just put up your website, which is advancedlifecoachmarketing.com. So people can go there and, and, and check more about you on your website. Mm -hmm. But define for us a little bit about what content is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great question. And um, I, I think it has to do with anything that you like any sort of information that you're putting out there. Um, and there's aesthetic content and there's and there's like informational content. Mm -hmm. And then there's like the, the merging of the two. Um, you know, the most interesting sort of content, um, and, and this goes back to like, what, what do you like to, um, consume in your free time? Um, it's, it's probably something more aesthetic, um, and it could be informational too, but typically people gravitate towards entertainment. Um, and I'm not talking about like, what do you consume for business? I'm, I'm talking about like, what do you consume naturally? Um, and that's probably like music or like a movie. Or like, um, you know, you're going to binge watch Netflix. Mm -hmm. That's all content. Um, but typically when we talk about content on the internet, uh, it's it's more informational style, like vlogging or blogging or something that um, shares information and educates you uh, and um, therefore educates the your audience, whoever you're speaking to about like what you do and how it's helpful and um, and uh, and hopefully engages them and help and helps them interact with you more it, it, in terms of marketing it's a form of it's a form of marketing that's super authentic compared to like old ways of marketing like billboards and advertisements sure. um, it's more about you being a producer and you being like a publisher um, as opposed to like you being this kind of in your face advertise uh, advertisement um, in old day marketing. Uh, but I, I think these these terms are are, are blurring, uh, you know, it's a little more nuanced than that. But essentially, that's what content it is. It, content is it's uh, information that you put out there. Mm -hmm. And and we know there's there's a lot of different variables in terms of how people are are consuming various different types of content. I mean, we know just even within the last few years, people are consuming a lot more content on their mobile, you know, their, oh, yeah. their smartphones and such, as opposed to just you know, back, back in the day, if you will, when you were a lot younger and, and I was too, but yeah. it's kind of going online a little bit. And, and now everything is, is so portable right within our devices to just kind of, kind of see all those kind of things. Yeah. So what I want you to share with us a little bit right now, Matt, is talk to us a little bit about your, your content creation journey. So in other words, like how you started and then lead us into where you are today in terms of what this outside of the box content right. is that you're talking about right now. Cool. Yeah. And, and it's multifaceted. Um, so when I talk about my content creation journey, I can't really separate that from, from what I'm doing for my clients and, 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 and what my clients are doing. So there's both my content that I'm producing and then my clients content. Um, um, I remember like being a kid and being a teenager and like being really involved in like, music forums and like baseball forums. Um, and I would literally go like, I would write pages and pages of content that I didn't know was content at the time, but I would write all this stuff about like music or like base fantasy baseball or fantasy basketball. Um, and I remember like sometimes it would get a lot of views and sometimes like it, it was all on forums at the time. Um, and that was my first like a gateway into internet content, I would say. Um, but the world is totally different. The internet is totally different, um, you know, than it, like 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Um, forums are typically pretty inactive for the most part now. Um, my first professional gateway into content was creating a blog while I was in college about philosophy. Um, and I, I realized there, you know, I, I wasn't trying to make a business, but I wrote this article uh, about psychological development and um, like, music actually and uh i realized when i wrote that I, you know i i i was excited about the article i shared it on reddit it got like a thousand views 
and that's when I realized that like I could I could generate views like I could create content that generates views and at the time too like I I remember the 2006 15 like democratic primaries um and I I wrote this article about Parks and Recreation the TV show and like which character um each each uh each Democratic candidate would vote for, or no Republican candidate actually. Um, and it was a funny article and I, I, I got, I, I published on Buzzfeed um, and it got like 10,000 views or something. And, and that was again, a, a sign that I could create viral content. Um, uh, again, even just five years ago, that's a different landscape like than today. Mm -hmm. um, but those were signs that I could create viral content and it was fun to me. It was interesting to me. It was exciting. Um, and so, you know, right when I, when I really started to make a business out of it, uh, I, I was mainly focused on blogging. Um, and, uh, and even, even the difference between blogging in 16 and blogging in 14, um, I noticed that there was a difference. Like it was harder to get traction and, and, and attention while I was blogging in 2016 and 17 compared to 2014 and 15, which is, which is weird, but it, it's true. Um, and uh, I got some traction, but it wasn't as much traction. And I'm speaking both for my clients and for myself. Um, and so, uh, yeah, like, like it, it wasn't as easy to get, get uh, views as, as, a, as, a, as, um, as it was in an earlier time. Um, so once something doesn't work, you try something else. Um, so I've, I've explored and experimented with a lot of different styles of content. Um, you try like, like interactive content, like quizzes and like um, uh, surveys and like kind of, there's a site called Play Buzz where you can actually like create weird, like Buzzfeedy content that's really supposed to be engaging, interacting. It gets a lot of views, but it doesn't get a lot of conversions to your website um and to your email list and stuff so you know that has its pros and cons um i i've uh, i've i've um done a lot on youtube like i've done a lot of youtube interviews i interview you like I've, I've interviewed like 50 or 60 different coaches um that's really fun i love doing that and and and, and to me youtube is one of the channels that still has like you can still do something organically on there mm -hmm. um but yeah, essentially my journey with content is I've done a lot of different forms of content, both paid and organic. Um, and I, you know, I have a lot of thoughts about what works and what doesn't, and it, it's all very nuanced and it's all it, the running theme in my, in my, in my view is that, um, everyone wants to get organic, um, traffic. Um, and we, we all have theories about what is the best way to do that. Um, but it's hard to do. And the, really the only way to do it reliably and consistently is your content has to be like freaking really unusual and, and original and awesome. Um, and that's the key that your content has to be a purple cow just as much as your product does. I like how you I like how you phrased about you know having that that purple cow right you know something that really is just going to stand out and, and and be different. And as you're as you're as I'm listening to you and you're talking and I'm I'm thinking you know where where is the content that I'm consuming that is is different or unusual because it always makes me want to go back and see what's new or what's been different. So yeah. so along that same line, how have you been able to create content that that's been a little bit different or been that purple cow for you in in your business and and what's what's what do you find is kind of making all this work right now? Yeah. Okay. So for me, um, I don't know. Some of you have probably tried to, you know, get organic SEO and it depends on your industry as well. Like how easy it is to get picked up on Google and stuff. Um, for me, like my industry is super, super saturated. So even if I write a really good article, um, it, it might get ranked on the second page of, of Google, but it's hard to get, it's hard to compete with like Neil Patel and like these like kind of really big figures who already, you know, they've already kind of dominated the the the, the Google space in the marketing world. Um, so for me, like, I had to do what everyone's not doing. Like, there's this whole thing where you you zig where everyone else zags. So if everyone else is talking about like online content and producing stuff on social media, and like you got Gary Vee and all this stuff, um, 
you know, it's, it's my view that you do the opposite of, of what everyone else is doing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so for me, how I'm able to differentiate is by um, focusing more on actually offline content. Uh, that's one of the ways. So by that, I mean, like, just as we produce uh, uh, content online, like, like you have Instagram and, and all this stuff, um, what I'm noticing in my personal life and my and, and just what I think people need, um, people, people are people don't want to be on the computer all day. People don't want to be on their devices. Um, they want to have, you know, be in a physical environment where they're like interacting with real people. Mm -hmm. um, so offline content excites me. And by that, I mean events and just cool things you can do like offline that just drive people to you. Um, that excites me. And it's a way for me to differentiate because it's way there's way less competition there. It's way less saturated than anything. And this is not just true for my industry, like the marketing industry. This is true for the people that are my clients as well. Um, like coaches who are my clients, like they they also have this kind of really hyper saturated market. So I encourage a lot of them to go offline and a lot of them are experiencing a lot of great success with that because it's just not, it's, 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 a, it's way less saturated. It's way easier to stand out. It's way easier to create purple cow content. Mm -hmm. um, it's not given. You still have to be original offline too, but it, it's one of the ways that I differentiate. Nice. Can you give us a couple examples maybe about what that, what that might look like for somebody that, that might be yeah, absolutely. a way to do this? For sure. I mean, just starting with like, I, I started with like simply um, really, really simple stuff at coffee shops. So um, uh, like breakfasts, like I literally would posted every day for a week. I posted this like um, breakfast and chat thing on Meetup. Um, and it, w it had nothing to do. Like I didn't say like business breakfast, like learn, blah, blah, blah. It was just a breakfast, um, part of like a, a group that I organized on Meetup, and it was super cool. Like I, uh, like five people showed up or something to one of my breakfasts, and we I didn't pay for them. Like they, it was at a coffee shop. Like mm -hmm. they got coffee or they got food. Sure. We talked, and uh, um, it was different. No, no one's really doing that. Um, another really simple thing to, that a lot of people I encourage a lot of people to start with is like a workshop. Um, or, you know, if you teach like a 60 minute or 90 minute class about whatever it is, it could be paid or it could, or it could be free. Um, another thing is like you host like a networking referrals group. Like I, I've done that in the past where it's just like you pass around a sheet of paper where everyone like writes down like who they are and what they're looking for. And then and you facilitate uh, like how people can connect between that. Um, but going beyond that, that's all informational driven stuff. Um, Another way that I think that you can differentiate is, uh, and the way, and a way I differentiate is that, again, going back to like, there's aesthetic content, and there's informational content, and people actually like aesthetic content more. Like, it's more fun. Um, you have a better time, and you actually learn. You know, you can learn just as much, and you can you can have informational stuff in there. So, some things I'm doing along that along those lines are like really weird, like escape roomy type type stuff mm -hmm. karaoke um and I, I know this sounds really strange but but it but i hosted a karaoke night um and, and it sounds like it has nothing to do with business but mm -hmm. afterwards after the karaoke like everyone who came started exchanging numbers i got everyone's content information without even trying because they were all we all we all had such a fun time um and there was like six opportunities like just right there through the six people who came to my karaoke night. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I mean, thinking outside the box about offline stuff, those are just some, those are just some, um, uh, um, potential things you can try. I mean, but I have like a whole laundry list of other things that, that, mm -hmm. uh, it depends on what you're doing for sure. No, I, I love those ideas that you shared. And, and in particular, it, it's, challenging us as, as small business owners, as entrepreneurs, to think of new and exciting ways to engage our group and how to bring more people in. I mean, what you're creating is a memorable experience. Yeah. Right? The, the, the blog or the article may not be as, it might have some really great content in it, but it won't be as memorable as a karaoke night or a breakfast coffee conversation or something like that, that yeah. is a little bit different that brings people together to connect in a new and different way. 
Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. And if you talk to most people, a lot of people will tell you that they don't need any more information. Mm -hmm. That's a sign that, okay, like that people, a lot of people have enough content. They already know what they need to do. Um, they're just missing like that experiential component, right? They're missing those kinds of experiences. And I'm not, I'm not saying don't create blog posts and don't do that. Uh, I'm just saying like people want something more as well. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so as you, as you talk about that, um, talk to us a little bit about what your, what your, belief is or your philosophy is in terms of how you grow and you foster these business relationships over time and, and what creating a successful business relationship looks like for you? Yeah, that's a great question. And um, I think the best business relationships are like you're, you do multiple things. You, you're, you think of each other as partners and there's like a thousand things that you can do long term. So it's not just like a one time transactional thing, but like let's say you have a client um, and then like you're working with them for three months. Um, and then like right after, after it ends, it's not like they're done. Um, the best business relationships are like, okay, maybe we're not a client. We're not like a client um, relationship anymore, but maybe now like we're more of a partner and we do like interviews together or we do like, um, we're, or we co-create some sort of product together. Um, so and then I also think it should be multidimensional. So like you have a relationship online, but also you meet offline. Um, those, to me, those are the best relationships. And I, and I don't know how obvious that sounds um, because like we're living in a world where like so many people want a Facebook group or like some like virtual community and it's all great. Um, but, you know, sometimes like, again, like that offline component gets neglected and uh, just like we have one dimensional relationships with people um, that are purely transactional when they could be so much more, they could be so like co-creative and all that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I think that the, the, the best business relationships are, you know, thinking not just as a transactional client, um, but more of like a partnership. Right. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. I mean, it really is about how we, we foster and we build those relationships. I mean, you and I've talked before, there's a lot of people out there that do what we do. Yeah, but, but people will hire us because of the relationship we create with them. They feel some yes. kind of connection, and they they get to see the the value that we provide, and when we understand as coaches how we can serve our clients fully in the moment. And it is about that building that business relationship that makes the difference. Exactly, exactly, and and, and exactly. People people buy from who they know, like, and trust. Um, and at the end of the day, like the more you're going to get clients from people who know you and like you and trust you. And that's, that's why there's, um, that's why it's so valuable to do things like karaoke or just not, or anything weird. Um, that's more aesthetic based and offline because, uh, how do you, like, you can't really create that much like in your dating life or in, in some other component, you're not going to like be doing all this, like, I don't know, like meeting someone and only being, um, only trying to attract them, like, online you're going to be obviously going offline and going to like a concert with them or going to like some sort of i don't know movie or something and i think that business relationships are actually pretty similar because it's about building that like bond really mm -hmm. and once you have the bond like i think everyone would agree here but like if you have rapport with someone if you have if you have that relationship it's so much easier to like sell something or do something or like create something um, as opposed to like, if you have no rapport at all with a client. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So speaking of all this content outside of the box, you've got some pretty interesting projects that are, that are being developed or coming up. So yeah. why don't you share with everybody a little bit about what, what some of those things are? Yeah. Uh, thanks. And, um, there's a couple of parallel projects that relate to, um, again, experiential content, um, and, uh, specifically TV show, um, sort of content. So, you know, there's vlogging, there's, there's vlogging on YouTube, um, which is traditionally informational. Um, but then there's like what you watch on Netflix or Hulu, which is like, all right, this is like aesthetic experiences. It's about entertainment just as much as it's about education. And uh, it's like you're you're watching it for fun, essentially. And what I'm trying to do right now and what I am doing right now is creating, um, well, A, uh, like a reality TV show about coaches 
that takes people behind the scenes of, of um, like what a coach does, who a coach is. And it's different for every coach. Like every coach, we actually approach it as we created an original episode um, for, I mean, original series for um, a, a coach. Um, so let's say a coach has to do with like, they help people develop their side hustle, which is the first episode we're filming right now. Um, we filmed her um, in LA. We filmed her kids. We filmed her husband. Um, we, you know, we, we asked her really hard questions that, that uncover a narrative. Um, we have all this like plot and story and character stuff. And we're approaching it more as like creating like Breaking Bad or like Game of Thrones or Lost or something, as opposed to like creating a Gary V like, like informational style um, uh, vlog. So um, yeah, we, we filmed our, we filmed our first episode of this reality TV show a couple weeks ago. It should be live in mid July. Um, and we're just looking to do more and more of, of that. Um, mm -hmm. And, and, you know, there's a, it, there's a lot involved in it. Um, it. So much more so than it's more like, I feel more like a producer. Sure. Um, than I do now a marketer because it's like that's how that's how i'm trying to approach it is like i'm producing a tv show and we need funds and we need to handle logistics and we need i need to hire a filmmaker um and, and that's how i see content evolving in the future is uh is is like us getting more and more sophisticated about what we're putting out there so that we can um essentially compete with netflix you know that they have 15 percent of internet traffic and uh um it's it's kind of it's more fun honestly to watch to watch netflix than it is to like watch some random person's uh read a random person's article or, or read some <laughs> <laughs> random person's uh like vlog um unless that vlog or article is really really exceptional sure so that's one thing i have going on um and then the other thing is uh, a parallel like documentary about the coaching industry and specifically the question of like why is it so hard for some coaches to sell coaching uh, when it's so easy for some others to sell coaching? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a question that I'm exploring in the documentary. I'm interviewing a bunch of people for it uh, in person and it's a super fun project. I, you know, it's going to take a while, but um, uh, it, it also goes align with like, all right, I'm, I'm thinking bigger about content and I rather spend my energy producing something like a documentary than um, just putting out what everyone else is putting out. Mm -hmm. I think those are two really exciting projects and I'm looking forward to kind of following you along with that because um, you know, we, we know in our industry that there, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff going on and I think both of those can be a, a valuable insight, perspective and service, um, not only to those of us who are coaches, but also to people in general to get a little peek behind the curtain about what, yeah. what this is all like. Exactly, exactly. Because the thing is, most people don't under understand what coaching really is. Um, so I'm hoping that the reality TV show sheds a light and helps people really get it uh, in a way that they also like people get what therapy is, but they don't really get coach. Like, what is coaching? Right. Um, I think that they're only going to get it if they either, either try it themselves, see it behind the scenes through like a s sort of a video um, or do it, you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm hoping that this helps with that. So Matt, as we wrap up, I got two final questions for you. So the first is, is that for anybody who's listening, um, what advice would you give them to help them create their next advancement opportunity? Um, yeah. So, so, so I think the advice is zig when everyone else zags. Hmm. Um, so be, don't be afraid to be different. And, and it may sound like something that Steve Jobs will tell you, but it's like, it's a uh, being different and being original and being unique. That that's what's going to help you create your advancement opportunity. Like doing something that no one else is doing is going to bring you energy. It's going to bring you excitement. It's going to help people like notice you essentially, and it's going to help you stand out. So whatever you're doing, like think differently about it, and uh, don't be afraid to do something that's completely weird and outside the box. Got it. Now that that's great advice. Thanks for sharing that. So Matt, if anybody wanted to get a hold of you uh, or find you online, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, so simply go to my website um, and there's a contact page on there. If you want to, if you have any questions, if you want to ask me really anything about creating content or 
if you want to engage with my content, you can do that as well. Um, but that's a really good place to start. Great. And uh, is there an email if people wanted to just email you directly? Yeah, for sure. For sure. That's um, matt.rosenbloom0105 at gmail.com. Exactly. Great. All right. So, so Matt, I want to thank you so much. We're, we're actually at time. So this is, this great. is great. So if anybody does have any questions that they want to follow up with Matt, uh, you can do so by going to his website, advanced, uh, life uh, or you can email him here and there's his, his email address there, Matt, thank you so much. I, I continue looking forward to building our, our friendship and business relationship. It's been great having you on the show today. I really appreciate your time and, and thanks so much for sharing your expertise with us. Thanks so much for having me, John. I really appreciate it. That was really fun. Good. Um, yeah. And I look forward to talking to you more. Absolutely. We'll do this again down the road and everybody out there have a great rest of the day. And uh, if you like the video, please go ahead and press the like button. If you're watching this on YouTube, give it a, give it a subscribe to be notified of more episodes and we'll, we'll see you next week with another episode. So take care, everybody. Have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye. Thanks, John. Thanks, Matt.